It's been a long time coming since I got my hands on a good, high quality, fairly expensive mount, and thanks to one of my Patreon providers, this video is now possible. This is a Reptila OS mount, or AUS mount. I'm just going to call it the OS because why the hell not? These come in at around the $325 price point. They are American made, and they do come in that really nice looking FDE, or at least it looks really nice in the picture. As far as the box goes, you have an outer shell, which gives you basically all the information that you're going to need to know. A little hard to pick up because it's a little washed out, but this is a 30 millimeter tube with a 39 millimeter height, and it is offset. The box inside is, well, pretty bare bones and scarce. There is our model number and our color on the side. And I'm pretty sure this is not a full kit because I highly doubt the mount would just be in here by itself floating around in cardboard. But if it is, please let me know in the comment section below. The coloration on this thing is very, very nice. It's unlike anything I've really seen. It's a bit of an in-between the size 6 and maybe an NX8. It's a little bit different. It's more of a gold than it is an FDE. And uh, I'm not opposed to it. But I just wonder why they chose this color anodizing as opposed to something a little bit less like standout-ish and like, hey, look at me. If you have this on a black gun, this is really going to be a point of, boom, you're going to notice this. But just how you're going to notice this from the color, you're also going to notice, once you get this thing in hand, that it feels very lightweight. And in true form, let's call it five and a half ounces, is pretty light. Now, I don't have any of the weights on me. I'll overlay them when I figure out what they are, about what other mounts of considerable price weigh, but I do have a SIG Alpha mount, which comes in about three-tenths of an ounce heavier. But this is about one-third the price, give or take, as opposed to this. And, um, you know, I'll leave this right there. There are a couple of key differences, and most notably, the SIG Alpha mount does have half-inch hex, which I'm not the biggest fan of. I understand why they do it, but in today's day and age, everyone's got a small... Everyone should have a small screwdriver kit on their setup or a couple Allen keys just floating around, even though this does have torques. These look like T25s or T27s. We'll touch on that in a little bit. But everyone should have every spare tool on them at all times. If you don't, it's not a true kit in my opinion. But something like this versus something like this are actually very, very similar, but not necessarily with just the price. But we're not here to talk about the SIG Alpha mount. We're here to talk about the AUS mount or the AUS mount. And right off the bat, I will tell you, it is beautifully machined. You can see that these were all bead blasted before they're anodized. You can see that there's this rougher looking finish under the anodizing. It's a little bit hard to pick up. Even with the naked eye, it's a little bit hard to see. But that just means that they probably bead blasted these just to take off any potential burrs. And the end result is a very smooth anodizing and something that has no real sharp edges. The anodizing also looks very even, all things considered. I do believe this is a used mount. I just don't know to what extent it was used. But it does seem like everything is even and nicely finished on this. While we're here at the bottom, you can clearly see we have one pick lock lock. And we have these two cross bolts, which will interfere with the pick locks. You can also see there's a slight undercut in between where the claws are. So this way, this area and this area are the only areas to come in contact with the top of the pick rail. I can see why they did it, because you don't want to have any interference with the block over here and a potential rounded edge that could hit against it and prevent you from having perfect contact on the flats. But I at least assume or hope that they did their homework to make sure that it actually does something of benefit. Either which way, that's an extra couple of processes that were, had to be done in there to get that to where it is currently. So you wonder why the, these things can be expensive. That is definitely one reason. As properly guesstimated, these are T25s, and they are spring-loaded, or at least the claws are spring-loaded, which is a really nice feature. It doesn't take that much to really machine in a couple of pockets for some springs and add in some really cheap, lightweight springs. Those look exactly like what you'd find at the end of a click pen. So if you probably lose one, you could probably cut one of those down. I'm not going to experiment with that, but you could see that these at least rebound very nice and even. Are they fully captive? I'm going to say no. So if you do back these out too far, you can see you can lose this little claw or spring quite easily. So be very mindful of that when you're taking these on and off. Like I mentioned earlier, I love seeing something other than big hex nuts on the side of precision mounds like this. There's no reason for it, especially considering once you get this thing locked up in position and torqued down properly, you never really have to worry about taking this off. 
Speaking of torque settings, if you're in the field or out and about and you don't have service somewhere and you don't know what your torque settings are, they are milled into the side. The ring caps, these are 15 inch pounds and the actual cross bolts are 45 inch pounds. Once these are slightly loose, you crane it over like so. There's a little bit of play forward and back. That's normal. This is a lot less than you find in a couple of other different mounts, so I'm very happy to see that. Pick rails should have a tight tolerance, a couple thousands at most, maybe tenths at minimum. So you can really make that block fairly precise while taking up the most amount of space possible, which would allow, again, for just less movement. This doesn't seem so bad. Looking at it from the front, Again, I love how just slim and, and neat this is. It looks so beautiful on this. It, nothing's going to interfere with this. You could even throw this on a bolt action of some sort with a 90 degree bolt and you're not going to worry about hitting anything. They're just really nicely machined and they're just beautifully executed. For anyone wondering, the top screws holding down the caps are T15s. So the T15 and a T25. Once again, the machining and the finishing on the caps is really, really nice. A bit of a sharper edge there than I would have imagined. Let me pull out these screws before I lose them. A little bit more of a sharp edge on this corner than I thought there that would be there, but it's not protruding from the face that's gonna be, ma be making contact with the scope, so you don't have to worry about damaging it. You can see the relief cut on the sides over here is even on both sides, which is nice to see. A lot of times I've seen this be larger on one side than the other. This relief cut here is to prevent pinching, because just in case you put this on a tube, let's, uh, let's pull something out of here, PST Gen 2 1 to 6. Sometimes you'll put this on a scope tube like this and it'll pinch on the sides, and that could damage the finishing on either the cap or the scope or sometimes both. With this, you could see it just slides right on. There's no marking, there's no high spots, everything just jives perfectly. You pull it off, nothing. It's beautiful. As for the base, you can see that the finish in here isn't as nice as it is on the cap. On the cap, which is to our left, and on the base, which is to your right, you can see that the finish isn't 100% identical. It looks like they picked up chatter from the machining process on the base as opposed to the cap, or it's just two slightly different materials and it gives a slightly different finish. Now, it's not necessarily a bad thing, but it is something to note. You don't feel anything with your fingernail. Usually with your fingernail, you could pick up as little as five tenths of a thousandth or half a thousandth, which is pretty precise, but there's almost no difference between these two, but you can visually see a little bit more. Also take note, <clears throat> like I was mentioning earlier, the relief cuts on the side, seem pretty even on both sides of this, which is, again, pretty nice. But on the base itself, there are no steel or stainless steel inserts. These are just threaded right into the aluminum. Between a Gen 2 Razor HD and a size 6, you can see that this OS mount is just nowhere to be even close. I thought the size 6 would be a little bit closer until I pull it out, and you can very clearly see this OS mount is very blingy. But you guys might like that. Again, with the NX8, it might be a little bit closer and truer to color spec, but it just seems really bright. I mean, it's even hard for me to pick this up on camera properly. Whereas both the Psi 6 and the Gen 2 are more matte and deeply colored, this thing just screams, look at me. Now, the last talking point I gotta mention before we go ahead and mount a scope in this thing and see how well this thing's gonna return to zero down on our tracking test setup is this center rib. I understand why companies do this. They want to add some rigidity in between the rings, which is perfectly acceptable and, and wanted. You want to have that be rigid, but they also want to mitigate and relieve as much weight as possible. But my preferred method of zeroing a scope in most cases is you clearly put a scope in there, but then you take a veneer or a caliper or something very thin and precision ground like a, um, a parallel block. You put it in there, you twist it, and you can get the scope very level very quickly. Something like, again, this alpha mount from SIG has a very flat wide base. So the wider the flat of the base, the better it will mate with the bottom of the scope, which are typically flat. Not all the time are they perfectly flat, but they're usually flat enough that you can get in there with a veneer, twist it, and you can get it very, very, very close, which I've proven on my tracking setup, which is basically perfectly zeroed. 
Is that a complete deal breaker for some? Probably not, but for me, it's something that I would prefer to see changed slightly. There are other ways of mounting stuff, but that seems, in my opinion, to be the most consistent and the easiest, as well as the cheapest. You could do it basically anywhere because you're zeroing your scope to the mount and the mount should be perfectly zeroed or square and perpendicular, however you want to phrase it, to the rail of your rifle. This just makes that step a little bit more challenging, which is something that I would like to see different. But it does keep the weight down at a fairly svelte five and a half ounces like we already saw. So far, this is a pretty nice mount. It is made in the USA. It is made completely of 7075 T6, which I did confirm on their website. But does this thing return to zero if you were to take it off of an already set up rifle, let's say to clean it, or there's a, there's a problem somewhere? Because that would be the ultimate test to see if this thing is actually machined to any sort of tight tolerance. So without further ado, let's get something mounted up in this thing and find out for ourselves. Boss mount with the venerable SWFA Fix 16X inside of it as zeroed as I can. Anyway, this is pushed forward on the pick rail and then torqued in the sequence front and then rear. So we're going to loosen it up and do the exact same thing to check its repeatability. The reason we're testing this is because if it's truly machined properly, there's no problems with the base as far as alignment goes, this should return to zero basically perfectly. Snug on the front, snug on the rear, torqued on the front, torqued on the rear. We are off a tiny bit to the right. Going to loosen it up, do the exact same thing. See we're loose, you can hear it pushing forward. Snug on the front, snug on the rear, torque in the front, torque in the rear. You can see that we are back to where we originally started. Loosening up the front, loosening up the rear. Again, we are loosey goosey, pushing forward, snugging the front, snugging the rear. Let's torque the front and then the rear. Let's see what we've got. We are off again, probably only by about a tenth of a mil, I'd say. Yep, tenth of a mil on the windage. Just for posterity's sake, let's go do this one more time. Loosen up the front, loosen the rear. We are loose, pushing forward. Snugging up the front, snugging up the rear, torquing the front, then rear. You guys will see this before I do, and we're still about a tenth of a mil off. So not a terrible performance. This is not a QD mount, so you shouldn't really have to take this off once you mount it. And it but if you do mount it, you might be about a tenth of a mil off on the windage or so. Again, if I was to just literally grab everything that I have bolted up, you could see doesn't really move all that much less than a tenth of a mil for sure so it's decent it's decent that's all i'm going to say so there you have it ladies and gentlemen a non-qd mount doesn't return perfectly to zero no true surprise there it's at least very very close only about a tenth of a mil off or so on the windage only so if you do remove this and put it back you might have a slight shift but it's only a single click usually to fix that is this thing worth the $330 that it usually comes in at? Honestly, I would say it is. It's finished really beautifully. It's machined very well. It's got nice tolerances on everything. And I do like the overall just sleekness of it. It's also in a fairly lightweight package and it does have some holes on it for mounting other options. The only thing I'm not 100% sold on is this champagne-ish color. It reminds me a lot of GM cars from the 80s and early 90s. It just looks kind of cheap in my eye. But truly, this is not what I would consider to be FDE, more like, like I said, champagne. Beyond the color though, this is a very good mount, and for the weight, its size, and its overall fit and finish, I think it's really close to being justified. Would I buy it? Probably not. I don't really have a massive need for it. But if I did, I'd probably paint it a different color because this gold just doesn't really jive with me. But it might jive perfectly fine for you, in which case, enjoy your 50 shades of FDE. With that being said, thank you all very much for watching. And as always, see you again next time. And a huge thank you to my Patreon providers and my Subscribestar subscribers. Without you, this truly wouldn't be possible. If you'd like to support my channel but don't want to join either of those, I completely understand. But you could still help by using my affiliate links in the description below, and or like, share, and subscribe as always. Again, thank you very much.